Sounds good. Welcome everyone uh, to our fourth and final series in our month long um, show episodes of Real Entrepreneurs, Real Talk. And this week, we're so happy to welcome featured entrepreneur, Laura Hoyos. And I'll be introducing Laura more fully in just a moment. But if you have been with us uh, for the last few weeks, you'll know that uh, in every month, every Thursday in July, we've had an opportunity to join here and to get to know a featured business owner, a member of the Women's Business Center community who has really shown a lot of strength and grit and determination through COVID to sometimes pivot her business and has uh, come through and weathered the storm. And so we thought we'd take some time this summer to, uh, as things are reopening and people are getting back to more normal routines to um, have a chat with a few business owners and hear lessons learned to understand, you know, some challenges that they've been through in COVID, um, maybe some new things they've tried, um, some new considerations for all of us and to really be inspired by their journey. So today we're really happy for this final um, episode to have Laura Hoyos with us. But before we begin, uh, I'm going to just give me, uh, take a moment to uh, introduce you if you're new to the Women's Business Center. Um, if you found us on the website, you may know that we have a lot going on, classes and webinars like this, coaching, uh, access to counseling. Um, so our mission as an SBA-backed nonprofit is to empower women to invest in themselves via entrepreneurship by providing the necessary resources to successfully start, own, operate, and grow their businesses. So we do that so many ways. Um, and if you visit our website, we uh, welcome you to stay connected. Here are our social media handles. You can call us, leave a message, send an uh, email. And through the COVID-19 program, which I'm working with this series and others, we offer um, free one-on-one -on -one business counseling on really any topic that you may have interest with in your business. So something today that we talk about in our conversation with Laura sparks an idea with you or resonates on something that you're working on and you think, gee, I'd like to talk to someone or get connected with a coach, uh, feel free to reach out and we're here to help. So now I'd like to introduce more fully, uh, Ms. Laura Hoyas. Laura is the owner of Paint to Smile a multifaceted art business that offers unique experience with different paint mediums. She is a teacher, a graphics art design, designer, and a certified makeup artist who turned her passion into a business. Laura was born in Colombia, and at the age of nine, she migrated to the United States with her mother. As an art teacher, she always loved the way art brought her back to her roots and how it connected to diverse communities. She believed adding, adding an affirming and that anyone could use paint, a paintbrush to, and a color palette to express themselves. She turned her passion for art into a business and Paint to Smile was born to help people bring out their inner artist. Paint to, to Smile started primarily as a face painting and body painting business where experience included moms-to-be having their baby bumps painted, which I think is just a really awesome and unique idea. So welcome, Laura. And I, thank you. And then second, I have another introduction to make is our um, guest host interviewer today. So really my role is just to kick things off here, but we're so happy to have a board member, Miss Weld Royal who was joining us to um, be our host and guest interviewer. We're so happy to have her. So Weld Royal is an entrepreneurial leader skilled at building and transforming content plat platforms, content, including a new project on women and finance. She is a proud board member of the Women's Business Center. So welcome Weld, we're so happy to have you as our uh, guest interviewer. Thank and you, Trudy. Yeah, so at that, I'll really going to pass the microphone over to you. This, you know, this session is really meant to be kind of conversational, um, to get to know Laura more and understand her passion and her drive and uh, what made, helped her make it through COVID. So I'll turn it over to you, Weld. 
Great. Thank you, Trudy and Laura. I'm thrilled to be learning more about your business. So let's just kick it off with, um, tell us a bit about a bit about your business. So um, like Trudy mentioned, I um, am an art teacher. I went to school for graphic design and, uh, and then I went back um, to have to get a post back in teaching and I taught graphic design and arts for a while and face and body painting was kind of like my hobby stuff I did on, on the weekend uh, for my friend's birthday and then um, it was created in 2015 I decided to to just create a business out of it I was having a lot of birthday parties uh, and that's how I started I started face painting my friends, kids, birthday parties. Then it turned into, oh, well, uh, this beautiful trend of maternity belly painting. And I love moms, right? It's such a beautiful way to celebrate life. Uh, and that turned into I um, paint and zip. Now I am also an instructor for paint and zip events. And during the pandemic, uh, I was, always, I was um, able to take that teaching um, side of me back into the, the classes and I started offering painted guide experiences through Zoom. All arts. <laughs> really, really interesting background. Um, was there one inspiration that really pushed you to start the business, Laura? I've always liked art. It was kind of like my element. Um, if I was in painting, I was off of it. It was kind of, I guess for an artist or a creative, you need it. But what really pushed me was I saw the need in my community for something that connected them. Um, and arts for me was it. Uh, being bilingual, I saw that there's not a lot of uh, art businesses there that are bilingual. Um, for me, the paint guided experiences for the families, I want to be able to have the grandmother and the grandkid in the same room even if they don't speak the same language, but they can understand me because I can talk to them in both English and Spanish. So for me, art is a way to connect community. I love that. I love that. I, I'm going to remember that art this is a way to connect community. Um, let's, let's pivot and let's talk a bit about COVID. How overall did your business fare during COVID? Well, my last event, I, I remember exactly, it was March 12th, uh, 2020, and it was a face painting event for a realtor for an open house. And uh, she said to me, we're, we're going to continue. It's, you know, it's already booked. They had me there. They had other like crafts and someone else there. And then that was my last event. I was completely shut down. Um, in a matter of a week, four days, all my events were canceled all the way up to October. Um, money deposits that I had from clients were, you know, I had to make a choice. Uh, you know, do I give it back to them? Do I keep it? Because it's not their fault. Um, and for me, it was more important to keep a client. So all the events that I had, they were all the way to um, October or more. I just, you know, I had to cancel them. And it wasn't their fault. So, you know, in, in a week, I was negative. I had no events uh, because for face and body painting, your um, March is when your season starts. Cold winter, it's slow, right? So you prepare yourself March all the way till October. And then right when I started having high season, I got shut down. <laughs> Wow. Wow. So I, I think what you're saying probably resonates with a lot of other folks on the phone that we had a business and then it kind of came to a halt. Um, was there one point in the pandemic where, where you just had that aha moment and you said, oh my gosh, if I don't do something, I'm going to be in, in trouble? I, I did. And I, I for me, I'm a very, I had a, a whole plan of this is what I'm going to do. And I've learned to plan because creatives, our mind tends to one, like we have so many ideas. So I know that I have to plan and I have to keep a, like a schedule. 
because if not, my mind's just gonna go. And uh, we had just started WCEC growth plan with uh, instructor Sandra Holtzman. And I say to you, she was got sent because if I wouldn't have been in that class um, for, uh, I believe it was 12 weeks um, during the start of the pandemic, I would have probably pulled my hair out. <laughs> you know, it was, it was that much stress because it was my first year going full force, second year full force as a full-time entrepreneur. I was not teaching anymore. And, you know, it was a very promising year and you stop, you can't mm -hmm. operate. Not because, because you can't. Wow. I, I, I've heard that from other folks that the WCEC program was extremely helpful, both emotionally and structurally, like mm -hmm. helps people think about how to move forward. So let me, let me ask you, um, talk about some of the, the business changes uh, that you then started to make during COVID to enable you to bounce back. So I think for me, um, it was a hard time excuse me, it was where I realized, you know, what, what's really my purpose? Because all business owners, yes, we're there because we wanna have our own business, but we're in business because we have a purpose, right? And for me, I said, well, it's art and I like connecting to people and I love seeing kids smile, but my tools were body paint. So, and it was me. If I wasn't presently there with face paints or body paints, then I'm not connecting to them. And I said, and so it, it, it made me really think back to realize why is paint to smile in business? And I said, you know, I've always wanted to instill in people the love for arts. And the best way to do it is to have them experience it. And I'm gonna continue to do that through the arts with different tools. And so I started offering um, Zoom painted guided experiences. I worked with Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield and um, I met them through the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. I face painted for their events because I'm a Spanish speaking painter so I can talk to their community. And they called me and said, we want to create, we're creating this wellness and health program for our members. And I thought of you and we would love to have you. And I kid you not well, I had just finished writing down uh, what the plan was. And my plan was, I want to connect to corporations and organizations that I can create this program for either their staff or their members where they're experiencing art and connecting and de-stressing because I saw that families need it. I had a lot of clients coming to me. You have to come up with something. I'm going crazy here with my little one. They, they can't go outside, they can't play. What are we gonna do? And then my corporate clients, because they weren't having those Monday meetings or those team building meetings, they were like, my team is, their morale is down. They're not as productive. What can you do that is fun and creative? And that's how um, these painted guide experiences came to life. Wow, so you planned, you used resources and it, it started coming together. So, so let's talk a little bit more about um, how the different resources really helped you. I mean, tell us about the resources and then how they, how they helped you pivot. For, as a Latina, um, as an immigrant, and uh, someone that came here from Colombia, I grew up in Colombia and I came here when I was nine, the culture is very different. The system is very different. I don't have, uh, and even if my, my dad and his family are entrepreneurs in Colombia, they have their own business, but it doesn't work the same as here. And uh, about 
in 2019, when I decided to go full force and leave teaching, I, I knew, I said to myself, I'm an artist. I know how to make the world pretty, but I'm not an entrepreneur and I need help. And I always bring God into the equation because I pray about things. And when you pray, things happen. So I prayed and I said, God, please help me. And I found the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Through the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, I found a lot of different like other organizations like Rising Tide Capital in Jersey City that brought me to the WCC. Uh, and there's many other organizations out there for small business owners and for minority owned businesses that are there for you, of filled with people that want to see you thrive. And, and, and I think that for me has been a blessing. Very interesting and, and helpful anecdotes. Laura, let me ask you to go a little bit deeper on business partnerships. Um, mm -hmm. how, how did you kind of grow your, your business partnerships do, during COVID? I want to say social media plays a big role. And I had no idea it played such a big role until the pandemic, and I'm going to tell you why. People watch you. You never know who's watching you. You never know when you walk into a room and you could be facing, face painting someone's child. You don't know who that child is. You don't know the person sitting in the chair painting with you what they're going through, and you live in impact. And people follow you, and people leave with this experience, but you don't know who they are and you don't know who's watching. And with, with the chamber and with being in so many events and having so many different people follow me, um, they came to me, you know? I knew in my mind, I set a goal, I said, I need to start looking for partnerships for organizations that believe in the arts and that also believe in the community. First came Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield. When they, I showed them and I started uh, showcasing everything I was doing in social media, um, I had met somebody from Univision New York. They called me, we wanna do something similar. And then Univision led to the Major League Soccer. And these were all women, all women that I had met at different events who liked what I was doing. They started following me and they're like, we fell in love with what you do and we want you to bring it to us. Um, so be authentic, use social media. It's the best tool you can have. Don't go crazy trying to think that you have to post this. No, you just, you're authentic and people know when you're giving them, when you're doing stuff from your heart, they can sense it really great ideas be authentic and and use social media yes so i as if i can squeeze in a quick question uh well yes. sorry i just wanted to ask more on these great partnerships like blue cross horizon and um i think you said univision did you have already formulated like um a package or program to present to them in advance like a sort of corporate painting experience program, or did you just kind of go with it on the fly when they contacted you? How did that evolve? Um, I started with a, with a program. Um, and like I said, I'm an art teacher. So that background kind of helped me put it together. And I always ask them, what do you want the takeaway to be? What do you want your employees or your members to take away from that experience? Um, because at the end of the day, yes, it's art. Yes, they're connecting to their inner artist. But the goal is, what do you want them to take away? And based on what they said to me, you know, we came up with, with a package, but the package was already created. And like I said, being part of the WCC growth program allowed me to think it through. And, 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 and then after I finished the WCC, uh, the chamber had another program for Latinas entrepreneurs. And I enter that. So I'm like, well, Paint a Smile is, it's the location is closed. We can't operate, but that doesn't mean I have to stop. 
wonderful answer. Thank you. I, so Trudy, do you, do you have another question or shall I jump in? I have so many questions. I yeah. No, go like, for it. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to have that question about the programs. Go ahead, Wells. So Laura, as New Jersey uh, returns, start to return to normalcy, um, what are some of the, the uh, changes that you've made that you will retain in your business? The, the biggest one was, um, I called it, uh, he's, you know, things happen so magically. And I think those of us that took the time to, to add or to really look at what the changes that were going on, um, you know, the, the virtual, that's going to stay. There's so many uh, organizations and corporations now that, that see, you know, there, there are no barriers. There's no barriers because I could, I had a call in one of my last, um, one of my last events, people were connecting from uh, the UK and there was another guy in Guatemala and then they were from all over the United States. So I, I tell myself, well, painted smiles were national, you know, before face painting only allowed me to serve Tri-State. Um, so the virtual, that's here to stay. And not only do I have a service, now I have a product. Um, because the next step is to get those art kits that I provide to each participant and to sell them individually. So now I have a whole plan. <laughs> wow, that's that's amazing. So you you started in New Jersey, then you served the tri-state, then you pivoted during COVID. And actually, you didn't just go national, you went global. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it sounds like you're you're on a wonderful path. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about you as yourself and um, how it was there something that you learned about yourself and as a as an entrepreneur during the pandemic that you didn't really know before. For me, it's it was res resilience. My yes, because I know my you know my accent kicks in sometimes, but because. And, and, and it allowed me to connect me back to my why, to why I do what I do. Yes, I have a business, but I always believed art connected people. And growing up, my dad's an artist, um, but I never had that, that relationship with him until now, right? But I always knew that art was my element. And, and I knew art was healing because I experienced it. Uh, in high school and middle school, I tended to um, be that child that was very happy, but dealing with emotions, I always took them in. And, and art for me was an outlet. Um, so I remember times where I was like very angry and I didn't know how to express my emotions. So I would take my notepad and draw or paint for hours. And then at the end, I was well, right? I was fine. So being and experiencing and seeing that art not only celebrates communities, it brings people together, but it's also healing, allowed me to, to tell myself, well, you know, paint to smile is going to continue to bring communities together through the arts. You just have to change your tools a little bit, but, or your platforms or how you do it, but you have to continue to do it because there's a need and people, need it so a lot of self-awareness uh yes. during during covid um so uh, resilience i heard about i heard about um art as healing which is just so beautiful what a wonderful concept um so i i have i have one other question i wanted to ask you about uh, is there advice that you would give to someone else who's thinking about starting a business in, in your industry? I'll just say, go for it. A lot of us, or especially for me, I'm like, I don't know if it's the right time. I don't know if I'm ready. And that, the reality is you're never going to be ready. You just have to do it. Um, I saw, when I started as an entrepreneur, I saw a meme and there was this airplane um, like those wooden ones that you have to put together and it was a cliff at the end of the picture 
And then the quote said, being an entrepreneur is like jumping off the cliff and building this airplane on the way down. And that's exactly how being an entrepreneur is because you have an end goal in mind, right? Which is jump the cliff and land, but, and, and fix the airplane while you're at it. But you have an end goal, how you're going to get to it. It's going to change. You're trying to figure out as you land how to do it, but that's exactly what it is. And you're never going to be ready and things are always going to change. And because uh, the trends evolve, society is always changing. And in order for you to be a successful business, you have to change. You have to be moldable and adaptable to what's going on. Um, I think that's the most important takeaway because if, if you don't if you don't adapt your 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 business isn't going to make it it's not i think there's some really good advice there starting with uh to borrow an old nike slogan just do it just get started <laughs> um so we've, we've covered my questions, Trudy. Um, so I, I wanna say, Laura, this was really tremendous. I've, I've really enjoyed hearing from you and I, I expect that other folks on the call learned a lot from this, from this interview. Trudy, Thank I'd love you. to turn it yeah, back over sure. to you. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much, Weld and Laura. I, um, your story is so motivating and inspiring. And uh, I had not met you in person. I've read a lot about you, Laura, before now. So I would say that your story is so engaging and um, inspiring. So I appreciate you sharing that with, with us, sort of your candor. And I do have a couple questions. Only because, you know, as a former business owner, a lot of things that you said about, I picked up on. And one, I want to go back to the beginning of the conversation when you were talking about deposits, because I used to own a business where people booked events, right? And they gave you deposits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you said at the top, when it looked like all of your events were canceled for the next six months out at Margit, that you made a decision, I think, to return the deposits. I don't think you said that, but I think that's what you did. Yes. And I'm curious, um, I know it was a financial hardship already. I'm not even going to ask that. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to know if now, have you seen that you salvaged relationship with clients, that you gave their money back. Basically, did that move benefit you to return the deposits uh, in a positive way? Yes. Um, I had the mom, you know, there were a few of them that, uh, that you know, wanted their deposit back. And uh, I said to them, sure. You know, and they were telling me, you know, my wife just lost her job. I'm home. And, and, you know, I could feel the stress. And I said, you know, and they were, a lot of them were one-time clients. Some were repeat clients. And I just, you know, I just gave it back to them because I knew that it wasn't their fault. It was something that, but it was my call. Do I want to keep a client or do I want to have a client upset? The biggest, uh, there was a client, which is probably one of the bigger deposits, the biggest events because she painted full. Mm. She said, I'm not going to take it. When wow. this gets back to normal, we're going to figure it out. And in August, her birthday was supposed to be that week in March. In August, she calls me back. We didn't do face painting. We did the paint with another 20 kids in her, uh, in her, uh, because she lived in one of those um, buildings where they have like a party room and we okay. went outside and we painted and she said, no, you know, I, I, I know you're struggling and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that to you. You know, and a lot of them came back. I would say most of them. That is you, excellent. You have to make a call. And I know some people, you know, a lot of people said to me, keep the deposit because it's right. yours. I said no because they're not canceling on me because they want to. They sure. have to. Right. And how am I going to penalize them for that? Right. But again, it's on, it's on, that's your call. Right. Wow. So I think that's such an admirable business practice to have. Certainly mm -hmm. big businesses, namely the airlines. Let me just start, I have a be in my bonnet with that for all those people 
who couldn't get their money back and they had to mm -hmm. cancel their flights because of because the airlines opposite of what you did right um so i love that and i do feel that you will get back good karma like clients will come back because they appreciate that gesture for you um but i have go ahead yeah I, I just to add but you know i'm a small business so for me is it's you know i don't have thousand employees that i have to keep employed i don't have a payroll that i have to meet like not, I mean, not as much, right? Less as as sure. the big companies and, and corporations. So I think for you to be able to make that decision, you have to look at everything else as a whole. And I'm sure that, yes, they weren't able to give deposits back, but they had so many other things sure. that were in play, you You're know? Right. You're right. Uh, I have a, there's a couple more questions. I don't want to sure. uh, suck up all the air, but I would encourage anyone here who's participating can take yourself uh, off mute, put yourself on video to ask Laura a question if you have one. But um, another quick question I had, we were talking about resources during this time of COVID. And uh, I was just curious, were you able to take advantage of any of the federal or state kind of funding relief programs? I know I did a and, and the WCCCD, we did like a bazillion webinars on all those programs. And mm -hmm. were, did your business benefit from any of those? I'm just curious. Yes, and I logged into a few of them and I remember um, with Steve and he was telling us all about PPP forgiveness. And yes, I took advantage of them. I applied for everything that came to me. I applied for grants, I applied for the PPP. Um, because the way my business is set up is an LLC and I, it's my artists or contractors because I hire them by events that I, I wasn't eligible at first for a lot of the, um, the uh, help they were giving. But as yep. soon as they opened it to us, I was able to get it. Um, and th the one thing I can tell you, um, entrepreneurs or somebody that's starting a business, um, even if you're not, your revenue is not as high. It is so important to have your books right because that's what helped me. The fact that everything was organized, the fact that I could go to my accountant and I could have my books and show, you know, and my business account and savings account, business check-in account and everything was set up right, I was able to get this help. Yes. Because a lot of friends, that were or had an LLC and they have it, it's easy, right? It's set it up. Mm -hmm. But but then you you pay yourself to your to your personal account and everything right. comes to your personal and then your taxes aren't right. So when you go and ask for help, you can't get it. Oh Laura, these are words to my ears. You cannot say how much you've talked about this so much. So I, I, you didn't see my uh, um, I'm clapping, but yes, I'm so glad to hear you say that and to know that you, um, you know, so it would have been converted to that because no matter how small your business is, I mean, you could be like making, you know, twenty thousand dollars this year and two million dollars next year. Well, it doesn't matter. You need to figure out how to manage it um, mm -hmm. and keep good. Man, records so that you can take advantage of opportunities. Thank you for that. Um, I have just one more, uh, one more question, I guess, and then please feel free to add your questions. And by the way, you're getting lots of love in the chat, Laura. I see. Which is an inspiring story. Um, but I was curious about your art kits. What, what's in your art kit? Like, um, are there paper and paints and um, how do you package it and send it? I'm very curious about that. Um, so I package it according to what the client tells me. Okay. It, it has all the materials inside. This is kind of when, when I first started. Um, it was one of my first art kits. Um, so it has all the paints and the back and the, the canvas. It's um, either if the client wants it to be pre-drawn because they want a specific theme, then we do that. Um, it has an apron, it has all the client, all, everything you need to just open it, come on and, and have it, you know, the experience of your life. Uh, but because I want the person to come in at ease, it's like everything's there. All you have to do is just open it um, and connect. It comes with a cup, it comes with, paper towels, it comes with everything you need uh, 
to paint and have a great time. Uh, and then, you know, and then it has other goodies that I like yeah. to add because I always, um, there's always a purpose, right? There's always an intention to that painting. Right. So depending on that, then there's a lot of other surprises on that box. <laughs> awesome. So we see the picture in the background. So the art kit is a standalone. So you actually don't get an art kit with the class. It's just, or, or do you have an art kit that comes in advance of a class or this is separate? Yeah, so you get both. What, what I started doing during COVID is, is offering this experience. So it was a nine, uh, 60 minute class and the art kit and, and shipping was included for each participant. Um, so, you know, if they came to me and said, we want to do it for my office and it's 30 of us, uh, here's the addresses, here's the theme. Okay. Um, and then I gave them options. Do you want it to have, uh, on different things that the art kid has, mm -hmm. uh, and depending on their budget, we worked on it. Um, and then everybody got a kit and everybody connected. Now I'm because people liked the kids so much, I'm working on just selling the kids alone right. so that people don't, you know, or they don't have the time to connect with all at the same time, you know, they'll have the kit ready Excellent. for them. Mm -hmm. Great. Oh, what a wonderful idea. Thank you for that. And I wish you all the luck in getting that out. I think, then, a, yeah, go ahead. To add, um, the person who printed all my stuff um, he's another small business owner that I met through the chamber. So I'm big on, yes, you're a small business, support other small businesses, mm -hmm. have that person that, you know, I, I always support. I think that's a, that's big for small businesses or your locals, um, right. you know, and I think as a community, we could do so much for during this time, if we just went to the small business owner instead of the franchise or the big uh, the restaurant, store. you know, or the big store. And, and a lot of them are healthier and uh, their materials are better and they're a lot more customizable because they're small. So sure. yes. <laughs> well, I'm glad you said that. Someone, someone should put in the chat, Nicole said, can you send the art kit as a gift? Yes. You can. I'm. That's the next step. That's what I'm working on now. So I can have those, and and people can send it out as gifts, or you know, if they just want to have something at home that they want to do. Yes. Oh, I, that's. I, I hope you um you're able to do that by Christmas time because I'm already thinking like this is the perfect gift for my extended family. Yes, we set up uh my web uh designer who's I also met through Rising Tide who was my coach now she's my web designer she said she just finished setting up the Shopify or or the cart thing I just have to start putting the actual kits that's awesome and well I meant to say this at the top of the hour but this is the perfect time for those who are joining I see some familiar names uh Feel free to you know chat your virtual business card to kind of share and connect with Laura. You know we find at the Women's Business Center there's so much networking opportunity with the clients who come here, and maybe there's some way that you can intersect with Laura today that you just heard that you didn't know before. Um, whatever your business might be to connect, because I think that would be a great opportunity. So um, and Laura, I'll, I'll, if you can't see, I'll send you the chats of this for other. Um, Sue Lee is telling us that she's an artist and a teacher. She loves your ideas. So that's terrific. Thank and you. I would it's imagine great. too, as many parents sort of coming out of almost a full year of remote learning, mm -hmm. especially for people with younger children, this was such a challenging year. I'm wondering if you there were any ideas sparked for you for like having some sort of art, remote learning, um, instruction for kids who, regrettably, I think some of us are still going to be remote learning in the fall. Yes, I, I looked into that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just have to see, I, I, I guess this is where I would ask my, my parents, you know, what would be a good time and what would be a good day um, so they can all connect 
and, yeah. and do it with them. Um, it, do you, I don't know. I feel like they're trying to all go back in person. I don't know if, so, True. you know, I, we'll see. Yeah, you'll see. I think so much will be determined in the next month or so mm -hmm. um, with where we're going in this direction of the pandemic. Hopefully we're going in a good place, but you never know. But I do know that I, I think your services and the way you've kind of pivoted and repackaged are so perfect for like enrichment activities. COVID or no COVID, I think parents often are looking for some enrichment for their kids. Um, and especially if it's self-contained, meaning here's an art kit, <laughs> go open it up. <laughs> yes. So yeah, terrific. Well, I think um, if there are no more questions, I um, want to just, as I always do, feel free. We still have a few more minutes to ask Laura or Weld or me or anyone on the call a question or comment. We're still getting lots of love. I'd like to post in the chat um, our link for um, business counseling, just to remind everyone of that opportunity. If you're interested, you can follow this link if you're new to our community uh, and if there's a, something that Laura has mentioned or that has surfaced during the discussion that um, you would like to further discuss with someone at the Women's Business Center or we can you know, connect you to a subject matter expert who is you know, on that topic, finance, business management, social media. Laura talked about the importance of that and all the opportunities it opened up for her during COVID. Uh, we have lots of marketing experts on social media who can help you there. So yes, truly, I think uh, coaching is a, is a big part of this whole entrepreneurial journey. Um, you know, before I just saw myself as an artist and through coaching, you know, you have to, they help you change that mindset. Like you can still be an artist, but now you're an entrepreneurial artist. <laughs> so, and you have to think of a business. Because for the much love that, you know, the, the joy that I get out of painting and, and, and allowing people to experience in art, I have a business, you know, and if I want to keep it alive and I want to have a job and the artists that work with me keep their job, I need to do it right, right? And I think coaching is, is, is the most important part of being a business, be coachable um, because, and always stay coachable because our vision grows by, you know, so much more you expand by bringing somebody else in your project um, and just stay coachable. That's very important. Oh, I love that. I think that should, should be our anthem moving forward. Stay coachable. Thank you for that. So uh, important to keep an open mind about new ideas. So I yes. hope uh, that you have been inspired by Laura's story today. I certainly have learned so much. Thank you so much. This and is, yes, I've learned so much too. And I've been really inspired. It's Yeah, it's I see we have a lot of I, on the chat, we have a lot of teachers. Yes, congratulations to you. And if you were teaching during COVID, even exactly. more, I you agree. It. <laughs> so much patience. Because a lot of you are moms and wives and teachers all at the same time. And you kept it together. And we appreciate you very much. And, you know, being in the classroom is, it's different. It takes, it takes a certain kind of heart to continue to do that. No, you're absolutely right. And I think uh, after this year, um, so many teachers need to be recognized for the incredible dedication. Um, and I did ask you this at the very top, Laura, if how difficult was it for you to leave teaching? I know you said you had to just jump right in and get started, but. Um... You know, I still get, um, wow. Um, I taught my, my last year in, um, in Playfield. It was an arts academy and it was um, highly uh, African-American and Latinos. And aside from uh, 
the other Spanish teacher, there was another uh, science teacher um, and myself, and we were the only Spanish speaking teachers. And this was a middle school and high school. So they were, I was able to connect with them and I had already grown into a relationship with them. I was very grateful for that opportunity because I started there right out of college. Mm. So I was always grateful because and I told my kids when I left and I felt it in my heart that it was time for me to leave. I said, thank you. I am grateful for you all because I have learned from you too, to be a better educator. And thank you for your patience because these last two years were an experience for me because I'm new at this. And I know that we both grow. And a lot of them are still, they still follow me. I get messages and they say, oh, we're proud of you, Ms. Hoyos. A lot of them are married. They just got oh. married. Uh, so, you know, I, I always knew that I wanted to inspire in our generation of, especially those creatives, because we don't have that many, that many people that we can connect to of artists, you know, like I don't, you don't see that a lot. Um, and, and if I inspire them outside the classroom, I did something right, you oh, know? Terrific. But it, it was a hard call for me oh. because they, you know, you you become, it, you build those relationships and I, I would see them every day. So for me to make that decision was really tough. Right, It was right. very tough. Wow, I understand. Uh, and I hear a lot of, uh, there are a lot of former teachers, retired teachers, someone say, now I'm ready to make that transition. So you've touched a, uh, a tender spot there on teachers and yes um that's wonderful and i don't I, I believe that you'll continue to be in that mode of teaching and instructing just kind of in a new place and yes. impacting lives of young people in so many different ways so that's terrific that's what i realized i said you know i'm still going to be teaching i'm still going to be impacting and and and, and sharing with them experiencing just in a different setting yeah. right i'm not in a public classroom anymore but I have, you know, every time I go to an event, every time I have a virtual pain experience, I'm instructing and I'm teaching and I'm instilling in them a little bit of that creative um, passion, right? So, yeah. Terrific. Well, thank you so much. Um, it has been a great uh, session. We. I'm so pleased to have you with us and thank you for participating and thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you, especially Wells for kicking off our conversation and guiding the discussion. I so appreciate it. My pleasure. It. it was a pleasure to have you here. Yes, so, thank you ladies. And I, I can't say enough uh, to the WCC. You guys have been wonderful. Nicole and Steve and all the help. Um, that you give small entrepreneurs is amazing. And thank you for the opportunity because, um, you know, it, it came from this talk to newsletters to then um, to the dissenters the sending me uh, different programs that were available. So this is, you know, I can't thank you guys enough. And thank you, Trudy and Weld. I was looking forward for this conversation and hopefully we'll be able to meet in person. Yes. yes. <laughs> Soon. And for I can sure. give you guys a big abrazo because uh, <laughs> that's how we do it in Colombia. Got it. Um, we, we'll get there soon. But, um, muchas gracias. Thank you very, so much. Very, 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 this was a great, great conversation. Thank you so much. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Have a great afternoon. We'll follow up with a recording to all who participated in a, uh, shortly. Take care. Adios. Bye -bye. Adios.